Well, it's Donnie again here. I got this camera sitting on the uh, top slide of this uh, Monarch Double E here. And um, what I want to show is uh, deflection, spindle deflection. It's something you might not think about. But look at this. I'm going to put my thumb, this is a 5C collet chuck here. And I'm going to put my thumb right here, okay? Now watch that indicator. See that? Look at this. Even way back here. Yeah, there, there's nothing wrong with those spindle bearings. Uh, as a matter of fact, those are pretty tight. This is a, a newer machine. The, uh, you'll find the older ones have a little bit more than that. Yeah, isn't that some? Well, you're going to fight that with things hanging out of a chuck. So, that's just part of the problem that we're dealing with. I'm going to close this door so that I don't trip. Okay. Now this is kind of a fun thing here to show you. Now this is a 5C collar chuck here. Yeah. Uh, with 5C collets, um, they were invented by Hardinch. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, uh, a Hardinch uh, is the best thing to uh, um, use 5C collets in. Because it's an afterthought here. Because, you know, on the EE, the spindle got this Jarno taper. And uh, the, the factory attachments kind of like this. But this check here is a... Yeah, it's a copy of a CNC 5C co uh, collet chuck, and I made it myself. Made it out of scrap 4140. I don't know, came off some kind of machine. And I don't know, 4140 is good stuff. But what I did here in the nose, I blended it in kind of at the very nose here, um, is, is a 5C CNC collet holder. Now they're about 150 bucks, and what I did was I pressed that into the front piece of this. This two pieces, it, it adjusts like a buck, adjust to a uh, chuck um, with these screws here, four of them. And you know, you kind of have to juggle the tightness of the, uh, I got three mountain screws here that hold the front piece to the back piece. Just an adjustable thing. Um, I um, can actually get away with using cheap collets at times with this thing. Now, um, this is one of the worst work holding things uh, uh, for high precision. You know, the, it, the collet itself, um, it, it just doesn't hold things very well the way it's designed but you know you can you can kind of uh, do some different things you know, I'll show you what I've done now to retain that collet in there um, I I fabricated this hand wheel and, and uh, hand wheel closers they don't make them anymore they're, they're actually dangerous um, like at high speed, if something should happen and the collet should break off, the uh, the hand wheel can get ejected. You know, it, it'll come out and uh, it can fling and kill somebody. I think people have been killed by them. So if you use something like this, you want to be really careful. And uh, what I do is I put something back here. I got a vise back here. I'll put a piece of metal in it in case this thing pops out. It'll it'll only go out so far and not fling out. In case a collet breaks, I haven't had a collet break um, while running, but I've broken them because uh, I over tighten them at times. And uh, see, it's got <laughs> this one. You got to be careful. You probably shouldn't knurl a hand wheel because. Uh, uh, call it closer because uh, you could get your clothes caught up in there and kill you. I know can it would really hurt you if you got wrapped up in this thing and this machine's out, uh, kicking out its full full power. So you got to really be careful if, if you do this. You can see I made the hand wheel kind of small diameter. 
And uh, the, the one thing about this closer is uh, I fabricated it and, and it runs, all these pieces run out less, you know, around one thousandths of an inch. Now, what happens when, you're, when you speed uh, things up on a machine like this at 4,000 RPMs, uh, a little bit of run out uh, really causes an imbalance and you can feel it in vibration. And uh, it shows up in the part. And any vibration or poopy things that happen make a part larger on the end when you're machining. So you, you really want everything as rigid as, as possible. But uh, I really prefer to use small forge out chucks for, for the high precision stuff. But when you get small, um, I, I would say I would use this at 5 8 inch and smaller. Bigger than 5 8 inch, I'll go to uh, uh, one of the, small, the smallest forger I have. I'll probably put that on for some tests a little later. Okay, I think that's about... Uh, Good enough for this one. I'll, I'll uh, come up with some other things here.